Hi all, Tevye here with Fiddler Online, and I'm just bringing you another quick tip. Whenever I do something in our business that's helpful to us, I try to share that uh, on our blog and on YouTube and things like that. So hopefully you find this helpful. If you're trying to figure out how to get alerts from SendGrid when something goes wrong, when something doesn't get delivered or, or uh, sent through the way it should. Um, we use SendGrid for all our clients so that when something on their website is sent to them, contact form, WooCommerce order, notifications, all that kind of stuff. It goes through SendGrid to maximize uh, deliverability and stuff like that. And so that we can see what happens if anything ever goes wrong. Um, so we were looking for a way to get alerted when something did go wrong. So here's how to do that, how to, how to make that happen. You have to use Zapier because um, the SendGrid webhook is not compatible with Slack. So if you just add it straight in, nothing happens. It doesn't work. Uh, so you need Zapier to, um, or Zapier, I think it's Zapier. I, I've heard it both ways, <laughs> uh, to, to translate it for you, basically. So I've already got mine running here, as you can see. But uh, what you want to do is you say, make a new Zap. Um, and then instead of doing SendGrid, if you do SendGrid, you'll see that there's only um, this one recipient newsletter list when a new list is added. So there's only this trigger when a new list is added, and that doesn't help us at all. Um, so I want to back up, or I'm going to actually go back and just delete this. And I'm going to do a new z zap, and which is why it should be called Zapier. Um, and if you start with web, it'll do webhooks. You want to get the webhook because it's going to do our webhook for us and then translate that to one that uh, Slack can't understand. So we want to say, I want to catch the hook, um, and then you just continue. You can skip this unless you know what this means and you know how to do it and you want to do something there, that's fine, but you can really skip that. And then now you're going to get the webhook, and this URL is the webhook. So basically SendGrid is going to send the information to this URL. So we want to copy that so that we can um, add that in SendGrid. Now we're going to jump over to SendGrid, and in our SendGrid account, we want to go to Settings, and then Mail Settings, and then come here to this Event Notifications section um, and expand it like this. Okay, you can go ahead and turn it on. Oops. Okay, yeah, turn it on. So now it's going to let it edit, let us edit it. We want to paste that URL in here. Now, for me, I don't want to get everything. Uh, if it processes it, if it uh, delivers it, if, it, if they're opened or clicked, I don't care about any of that. That's all fine. It, that's how it should be. Uh, what I'm worried about is if it gets dropped, uh, maybe if it gets deferred. Um, I didn't do deferred on mine, but you could do deferred. Um, definitely if it gets bounced or if it gets marked as spam, those are the times that I want to know uh, that there's something going on there. So I'm going to set it like that and check this here to do that. And it is set to on. You can see it says active right here. So this is working at this point. Um, so now I can jump back over here to the Zapier and say, okay, I did this. Um, now it's going to, it's going to check the hook and see if, see if it seems to be working correctly and see what kind of data uh, SendGrid is going to send over. So let's see if this, if it gets, if it doesn't, we can send a test from SendGrid to help it out. So let's see what happens here. Okay, I let it wait a minute or two and so far nothing's happened. So I'm going to jump back over here and try to help it out. I'm going to give it a little kick from the other end. Uh, I'm going to tell it to test my integration. And what that test should do is to send uh, that data um, over to, to Zapier, to the webhook. Uh, and now, as you see, if I jump back over to Zapier, it shows that it, it's successful. Um, so now I'm going to continue. And now an action app. So now where do we want this data to go? Like it, it came in from uh, SendGrid just fine. So what are we going to do with it? Well, I want to send it to Slack. Now you may want to send it somewhere else. Maybe you want a notification in. Um, Asana or HipChat or any number of other places. That, that works too, but um, uh, you should be able to send it to any of those places that uh, Zapier integrates with. But I specifically want it to go to Slack. 
I want to send a channel message because I want my whole team to see it. Now, if I just only wanted me to see it, I could send a direct message uh, or something like that. But I want to just create a channel message so I can save and continue. And then my Slack account is already connected. Now yours may not be connected and you'll need to click some buttons here, uh, click on the connect new account and authorize your Slack account with Zapier so that Zapier has permissions to post that stuff. Um, now I'm gonna just select a channel. I want it in my alerts channel. You may want it in a different one. And the message of the text, um, you could put something like, said you had Sydney issue, and then you put information about it in there. Um, so you may want like the email address, and then I like to put spaces between them, um, the event, you know, that went that happened, the status of that event, um, timestamp, like when it happened. Um, message ID can be helpful. Uh, the reason can be helpful and I'll post in my blog post about this, like exactly what I set mine up as, but you know, obviously you can do it however you want. Um, so anyway, you do something like that and then you want to send it as a bot. Yes. That means that it'll just appear as a bot in there. Um, uh, you can select a bot emoji and all I did was the email emoji. So if you click that link, you can get the, um, oops. Keep hitting the wrong keys here. So, uh, mail. So we can just put in the email emoji. That's what I want it to be. Cause I'm not going to worry about trying to make it look like the send grid icon. Uh, or logo. Um, actually, I'm going to call it send, send grid. So it'll show up as send grid in there. Um, you can put a custom icon if you want to. Um, I don't want it to worry about any of this stuff. So I'm just going to gonna go past that and continue. Um, okay, so we're going to create and continue. And now it says we've posted on Slack. So now check out Slack and see if that looks okay. So if I come over here to Slack and my alerts, send grid, sending issue, um, you can see this is the test right here. Um, now what you can do at this point as well is come back over here to uh, send grid and test your integration again. And this time Zapier won't take it just um, to, for the testing purposes or setup purposes but it'll actually push it through into Slack. And what you'll see is something like this, um, you know, example test, and then it's got all these test, 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 um, test stuff, right? Um, and then lastly, what I did is I went into a WordPress website and I'll show you how I did that and sent a bad message on purpose just to make sure that when it bounced, it would show up in here. Um, so let me show you how I did. So here's inside uh, the WordPress inside of my uh, website, my company's website, fiddler.online. And if you go down to settings and then the send grid option, and this is if you have the send grid plugin installed, then you can send a test email. So all I did as I put in here, someone at somewhere.com testing a bounce, whoops. Yeah. Now, if I send this, um, it's going to go and this, this address doesn't exist. So it's going to bounce or it's going to get dropped if I've done this address before. Um, I could even change it to, you know, someone or something like that if I want to do a new one to make sure that it bounces. Um, and then hit send. You don't need to change it if this is the first time you've ever tested with that address. But hit send. What that does is it sends, uh, it tries to send a message through SendGrid that I know is not going to work, and it bounces. 
So then I wait within 15 minutes if you're on the free Zapier account. Um, and then you'll get a, a message like this right here. Drop someone at somewhere or bounced is what it'll probably say for you. And then uh, give you some of the other information that, that was associated with that, right? Um, and then that's it. You know it works now. Uh, because you selected those options, it's only going to hit the URL when you know one of these items happens in your SendGrid account. And what it's going to do is it's going to send that over to this um, uh, Zap that you set up on Zapier, and um, and show up in your uh, in your Slack. Now this one's actually still off, so if you did a test already at this point, it may not have worked. Um, So what you need to do is give it a name like that and then activate it. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to my dashboard. And so here's that new one that I just created. Now I don't need two of them, so I'm actually going to delete this one here in a second. But uh, now it's active. Now it's totally active. So now if I go over here and I send that purposeful, you know, to a, a bad email address that I know doesn't exist, um, then it should bounce and then show up in Slack as I showed you. So that's how you do it. That's how you can get notifications in your Slack or you know anything else that Zapier uh, supports, whether it be uh, HipChat or one of those other ones that you might use. Uh, you can get those same kind of notifications uh, using Zapier. Thanks so much.